question. What are some strategies you can use to make sure that your offer on your dream home gets accepted? The housing market has definitely cooled off a little bit. Uh, here in uh, Rhode Island, it really kind of depends on where you are. Uh, on Aquidneck Island, the housing market has stayed pretty hot. Uh, there are still opportunities for you to get stuck in a multiple offer situation. So let's talk about some strategies you can use to be successful. The first thing you want to do is save as much money as you can before buying. Make sure you have a, a good feel for what you can afford, for what compromises you're willing to make, and uh, how you can make your offer as attractive as possible. Having a good amount of cash put aside can do a couple of things for you. Number one, if you can increase your deposit, if you can have that cushion for any appraisal gaps, you're going to be a stronger buyer and, and the seller is going to prefer to go with someone who has a stronger likelihood of, of executing this deal and closing at the end of the process. The second thing you want to do, and honestly, it's really the first thing you want to do, I should have said this first, was get pre-approved. You need to know what your budget is. You might be thinking, oh, I can afford around this or that, but maybe you're not taking into account how much property taxes are, are or how much insurance is going to cost or what the interest rates are. Interest rates have been pretty volatile. They just went up 75 basis points in early October. Um, the Fed is saying that they expect to see interest rates continue to rise. Um, knowing what you can spend in advance will keep your spirits up, will help you focus on the properties that are best for you and help you make good decisions. Let's talk a little bit more about having room in your offer. You want to make sure you're putting an offer in on a house that leaves you wiggle room for pricing. That does not mean you can choose a house that's you know, you're, you're pre-approved for 450,000. You're looking at a house that's 575,000 and you're saying, well, we'll just put an offer in and see if they come up, if they come down to our price. That is not going to happen. Um, you want to make sure you're offering in your price range. Uh, and you want to make sure you're leaving yourself just a little bit of wiggle room because you may have to come up on your offer. You may end up in a, in a multiple offer scenario. We need to be flexible with what we can spend. The other thing you want to do is make sure you're building rapport with the seller. So be thoughtful towards the seller. Always act as though the seller is right there and invited you into your home. And be thoughtful in how you negotiate. Try not to put hard lines on things because we want the seller. It is a better negotiating tactic to operate and work with someone with whom you have a good rapport. Um, and that's a good thing to bear in mind. If you've got an agent who's saying, I'll lay the hammer down and we'll get this done. It's not usually a great way to go doesn't mean that your negotiation can't get there at some point but if if your agent is is giving you that idea up front that that's how they're going to negotiate it's more likely that people won't want to negotiate with that person which could come back and kind of shoot you in the foot so if you'd like to hear any more videos of about purchasing or selling go ahead and hit that subscribe button Click the thumbs up if you think this was good content and hit the bell and you'll get notified automatically anytime we do a new video. I'm Sandy Warner with Warner Realty Group, making the complex simple.